Hello, everyone, and welcome to what I think is a really fun and exciting project. We've all chatted with AI models like ChatGPT or Claude one on one. But have you ever wondered what would happen if you put them in the same room and made them talk to each other? What would they say? Would they agree? Would they argue? The complete code of the application is available in our GitHub repository. You can find the link in the description of this video. Well, today we're going to find out. We're going to build a multi-chatbot conversation system from scratch. This application will allow us to give a topic to three different AI models. One from OpenAI, one from Anthropic, Claude, and a local Olama model and watch in real time as they not only respond to the topic but also critique each other's answers. We'll build the entire system using Python, from the backend logic that calls the APIs to a beautiful streaming web interface using Gradio. This is a fantastic way to learn about multi-agent systems and API integration. Let's start building our AI debate club. Before we write any code, let's understand the flow of our application. You can think of it as setting up and running a formal debate club. Our Gradio UI, which we'll define in main.pi, is where we, the user, act as the moderator. We propose the topic for the debate. When we click Run, the topic is handed off to our conversation conductor, the run conversation function inside conversation.pi. This function is like the debate's director. It manages the entire flow. The conductor first sends the initial topic to each of our chatbot agents. Each agent is an instance of our chat system class, which is a universal wrapper we'll build to handle communication with the different APIs. Each agent forms its opening statement. Then comes the most interesting part, the critique round. The conductor takes the response from, say, the open AI agent, and shows it to the Claude and Olama agents, asking them, what do you think of this? It does this for every agent's response. Crucially, every single message, every opening statement, and every critique is sent back to our Gradio UI the moment it's generated. This is called streaming, and it will allow us to watch the entire debate unfold live. It's a clear, logical flow that we're now going to build piece by piece. Let's start with our most fundamental building block, the chat system class in chatsystem.pe. Think of this as a universal translator or a blueprint for any chatbot we want to add to our system. By having this generic wrapper, we can make our project easily extensible in the future. In the init constructor, we store everything that defines one of our debaters. We pass in the processor, which is the actual API client object from libraries like OpenAI or Anthropic. We give it a system string which defines its personality and instructions. We specify the model name, and we initialize an empty list called messages to store this bot's unique conversation history. Now, the call method is where the communication happens. It takes a new message, appends it to its history, and then makes the API call. Here, we see a key piece of real-world coding, handling slight differences between APIs. The Anthropic API for Claude expects the system message to be a separate parameter in the create call. However, the OpenAI API, which the local Olama server also mimics, expects the system message to be the very first item in the messages list itself. This simple if-else block handles that difference gracefully, allowing our single call method to work for all our bots. Now we move to conversation.pi, the script that will direct our AI play. The first part of this file is all about setting the stage and casting our characters. We start by loading our secret API keys from our .env file. Then we initialize the client object for each of our three services. For OpenAI and Claude, it's straightforward. For our local Olama model, we point the OpenAI client to our local server address, which is typically localhost colon 11434. Next, we define the specific models we'll be using. I've chosen some fast and capable models here like GPT-40 Mini and Claude-3 Haiku to keep the conversation flowing quickly. 
And now for the fun part, creating our debaters. We create three instances of our chat system class. For each one, we pass in the appropriate client and model name. But most importantly, we give each one a system string that defines its personality. Notice the prompt for OpenAI chat. We've explicitly told it to be insightful but also snarky, to disagree and to challenge everything. This will make the conversation much more interesting. We then group all our chatbot objects into a simple list called chatbots for easy access. This is the core logic of our application, the run conversation function. A key thing to understand is that this is a Python generator function because it uses the yield keyword. Think of yield as pressing a pause button. The function runs until it hits a yield, sends the specified data back to whoever called it, in our case, the Gradio UI, and then patiently waits. When the UI is ready for the next update, the function resumes from exactly where it left off. This is the mechanism that enables our real-time streaming display. First, we loop through our chatbots and reset their message history to ensure every conversation starts fresh. We prepare the initial prompt from the user's topic. We set up a dictionary called logs to keep track of the text that will appear in each chatbot's display box. Now for the first main loop. We iterate through each chatbot in our list. For each one, we first update its log to say calling and immediately yield this status to the UI. Then we make the actual call to the bot's API to get its response to the initial prompt. We store this response and then update the log again with the full response text, yielding once more to the UI. This loop ensures each bot gives its opening statement one by one. Now for the most dynamic part of the debate, the critic round or the rebuttals. This happens right after the first loop finishes. Here we have a nested loop structure. The outer loop iterates through each of our chatbots. This is the bot that will be doing the critiquing. The inner loop then iterates through the responses we collected in the first round. This is the response that is being critiqued. We have a simple if statement to make sure a bot doesn't critique its own response. Then for each critique, we again yield a status update to the UI like critiquing response of Claude. We then construct a brand new prompt. This time, the prompt is very specific. We ask the current bot to critique the following response from, and we insert the other bot's name and its actual response. We then call the bot's API with this new critique prompt to get its analysis. Finally, we format this critique, add it to the bot's log, and yield the final state to the user interface. This nested loop ensures a full round robin of critiques, making for a very interactive and engaging output. Finally, let's look at main.pi, where we build the stage for our AI debate using Gradio. This script is wonderfully concise thanks to the power of the Gradio library. We create a layout using GR blocks. We use GR markdown to add our titles and descriptions. We use GR row to organize our components horizontally. We create a text box for the user to enter their topic and a button to start the conversation. Below that, we create three separate markdown components, one for each of our AI models to serve as their display boxes. Now for the most important part, the dot click event handler. This single line of code connects our front end to our back end. We tell the run button that when it is clicked, it must call our run conversation function. The input should be the value from our topic input text box. And here's the key for our multi-output display. The output's parameter is a list of our three markdown components. Because our run conversation function yields a tuple of three strings, Gradio is smart enough to map the first yielded value to the first output component, the second value to the second, and so on. This is how each bot's log gets routed to the correct box in the UI. Finally, demo.launch starts the web server and opens the application in your browser. So let's step back and look at the powerful system you've just built. This is more than just a simple chatbot. You've created a universal chatbot wrapper, a piece of reusable code that makes it easy to add new AI models. 
You've built a multi-agent conductor, a sophisticated piece of logic that can orchestrate complex multi-step interactions between different AIs. And you've wrapped it all in a beautiful streaming web UI that brings the entire process to life. You now have a framework for experimenting with multi-agent AI systems, which is a cutting-edge area of research. The possibilities from here are endless. You could easily add a fourth chatbot to the debate, perhaps one using Google's Gemini API. You could create more complex conversation flows with multiple rounds of rebuttal. You could even change the prompts to make the AIs collaborate on writing a story or solving a coding problem. Thank you so much for following this tutorial. If you learned something new and had fun building this project, please give the video a like and subscribe for more deep dives into creative and practical AI applications. Happy coding!